Hey everyone, I'm that UK Gamer and I would like to make an apology before I start the video. If you watched my previous video, you will have seen that I have been ill. That is true, I still am. I'm still sore and tired as anything, even doing this video is a struggle. However, it's been a while, I want to get some content out to you lot and I want to apologise for the lack of interaction with your own videos. I intend to make that up as soon as possible. And I look forward to what I will see. Thank you for your understanding and patience. In this video, I am going to showcase some of the items in my Japanese Nintendo 64 collection. If you've seen my previous videos, you will know that the Nintendo 64 is my favorite console. I am trying to get an entire PAL collection. I am about 89 games. So, I'm getting there. However, I also have some knowledge and experience of speaking Japanese and I'm looking to build a Japanese Nintendo 64 collection. What you will see in this video are some of the games that I already have and I may go into some that I'm looking forward to get. There's stories behind some of these and I hope you enjoy what you see. So thank you for watching the video, whether you're new or an old subscriber. I hope you like what you see and we'll come back for more in the future. Let's get into it. So, before the video, I would also just like to quickly say, this video's mascot is my pop vinyl of Brains from the original series of Thunderbirds. He is an awesome guy. Okay, so, the first game is this. Banjo-Kazooie 2, or, in other places, Banjo-Tooie. Picked this up at Comic-Con last, in May, not last month, for about five pounds. The cartridge version of the PAL version goes for approximately 40 pounds. This is a case of the Japanese games being a lot, lot, lot cheaper than the PAL versions. Although I can speak Japanese, I'm not that great, so trying to figure out what I'm doing should be fun. <laughs> that will be the case for a lot of these games, as will the price difference. I have Banjo-Kazooie in English. It's a very good game. I've heard good things about this one. Maybe not quite as good as Banjo-Kazooie, but I really look forward into playing this. And come on, look at Mumbo Jumbo and his skull. Mumbo Jumbo's awesome. And I can't wait to play Banjo-Kazooie in Smash Bros. Ultimate, which I now own. Yay. Okay. This next game, I have two copies of in Japanese. And you may be like, why? That's his pointless. Understandable having English and Japanese, maybe even having PAL US and Japanese. Nope, I have two Japanese, but there is a reason behind this. And that game is one Nintendo 64 classics, no matter where you are. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And as I said, I have two of them. This one was the first one I bought. I do not know if you can see it. But there's a little inscription there saying 08B. This one says 08. That B makes all the difference. There are three versions of the game in Japan. Version 1.0, 1.1, 1.2. If it has two digits, such as this one with 08, it is version 1.0. If it has two digits A, it's version 1.1. And if it's two digits B is version 1.2. This version 1.2 is the one that we have in the Western world. And given we know how good it is in English, it's going to be really good in Japanese. And will be a test of skill and memory to see how well you can do it if you can't read the Japanese. This version is version 1.0. We never got this. And there are a couple of differences. The first is when you battle Ganon. There is red blood, not green. That is one thing that got removed. You may also have heard that the fire temple had chanting in the background. That is present in this version of the game, but not in this one. This is another thing that got removed. There is actually videos of this original version of the music on YouTube. I highly recommend looking it up. I believe you're looking for a fire temple removed version. So, I think this game and this game came to about 
12, 13 pound between them. This one, the 08B, seven pound something off Amazon. This one, as with Banjo Tui, or Banjo Kazooie 2, was five pound from Comic Con. Yeah, Comic Con's good for Japanese games. In particular, I would like to give a shout out to uh, Alan McCluskey's Japanese game sales. That's where I bought these from. It's where I bought um, some Japanese games from last time in October. There's a Facebook page. I'll try and share the link below. Really good. And I'm sorry if I got the name slightly wrong. You'll see it when you get the Facebook page in the description. Okay. Next ones. Sort of a pair. And they are Mario Party 2 and Mario Party 3. Now, if you know the PAL market, this goes for at least 70 or 80 cartridge. This goes for at least 40 to 50, if not a little bit more. I've seen box versions of this, Mario Party 3, going for 150. So yeah, I paid 10 pound for both. Again, a clear example of how the Japanese market and game sales and prices are completely different to the UK. I'm not entirely sure about the US, but I know they're still not as cheap as they are in Japan. This is going to be a game where having played it in English will really help because we all know what controls are like from Mario Party. They're complicated at times. Generally, they're not too bad, but you've still got to figure out exactly what to do. I have some experience of this one, so it's not so bad. This, however, I have never played. It's about the only Mario Party I haven't played, so when I do get around to playing this, soon hopefully, it is going to be a lot of fun, trying to figure out what the mini games are. There is practice mode, but I think that's the wimp's way out, so I'm not gonna try it. This should be fun. Who knows, maybe there'll be footage of me trying some of these games, and you can see how much I struggle. Still, again, Five pound each from Adam McCluskey. Thanks. Okay. Uh, okay. One more from the Adam McCluskey sales at Comic Con. Again, five pound. And this is Mario's story. Now, if you know your Nintendo 64, you will know there is no game called Mario Story. However, this is it right here. However, the design might look familiar to you. Mario Story is the Japanese name for Paper Mario. And as I said, if you know the market, you will know that Paper Mario on the Nintendo 64 is another game that goes for quite a lot. In this case, again, I paid the fiver. So once again, as I said, Japanese prices. I have tried this in Japanese and I've only managed to get anywhere thanks to my girlfriend who owns a European version. I struggled. I can make out words, but I still don't know what I'm doing. Item descriptions, general notes on where to go. Yeah, I'm struggling. Never having played the game, this demonstrates what a challenge it is to play a game in a language you do not fully understand. Having some basic knowledge has helped, but I could really do with a lot more. But if you want to give yourself a gaming challenge, playing in a language you don't know and especially if it's one you've never played before, that's a great way to do it. I can promise you that. Sorry about that. Low battery. Hmm. You know I enjoy these 64 games. Well, at least I hope you do by now. And there are more. I have more behind me, including some Japanese exclusives, which I will get into in another video. Let me know also if you enjoy seeing these games of a different language. I have some other ones, including Japanese ones from other systems. But still, I can see why this is a good game. Right, the next three games I'm going to do as a trio. Two of them I have in English. The last one, I do not. And these are Pokemon Stadium. Note the two. And Pokemon Stadium 2, or in Japanese, Pokemon Stadium Gold and Silver. So as you can see, in Japanese, they have different names. We only got two in English, Pokemon Stadium 
Pokemon Stadium 2. Our Pokemon Stadium is the Japanese Pokemon Stadium 2. And our Pokemon Stadium 2 is Pokemon Stadium Gold and Silver. So, if this is Pokemon Stadium 2, what is Pokemon Stadium? Also, out of interest, still kind of showing 100 or so yen, which is approximately 70p. So, just to give you an idea. So, this is Pokemon Stadium in Japan. You may have heard of this. This is a restricted limited version where you get Pikachu and all the evolved Pokemon, and that's basically it. No mini games, it's all cut down. Thankfully, these games were no more than about five or each. A couple of them, actually, including Pokemon Stadium 2, the Japanese Stadium 2, came with my Nintendo 64. This actually has some interesting looks to it in terms of the stadiums, the menu screens. I actually prefer it to the actual Pokemon Stadium, our Pokemon Stadium. This is where it gets confusing. I'm sorry, even though I'm confused at times. But if you own a Japanese 64, and especially if you like Pokemon, this is an interesting game to look for. There will be more Japanese Pokemon, but not in this video. And if you know me, you'll know I like Pokemon. There's Palkia, right? There. And you might be able to see a couple other pins and that here. So, between these, no more than 15 quid. I don't even think that. And given that Pokemon Stadium 2 goes for at least 35 quid, Again, you see the idea, don't you? I paid no more than £30 for my second copy of Legend of Zelda, Paper Mario, or Mario Story, Banjo Tooie, and Mario Party 2 and 3. No more than 30 quid. In fact, it's about 35. There's a couple of other games I've got that put up to 30 quid, so. And when you think Banjo Tooie alone goes for £40, along with the rest of them, you can get a good idea that the Japanese 64 games are a lot, lot cheaper than ours and I wish I was out there and I could buy a load more and if I do go out there, I will. I will come back with too much. I just know, I have no idea where they will all go. <sighs> Ow, I hurt. Okay, two more things I wanna show you. One of them I believe I've shown on the video before is this. My box Japanese copy of Star Wars Shadow of the Empire. I love my 64 games, as you know. I love my Star Wars games. They are some of the best games on the console, especially Rogue Squadron in my mind. Episode 1 Racer is also really good. And so this one, it's good. I prefer Rogue Squadron, but it's still good. And as you can see, it has an awesome box. You may also notice that these boxes are portrait, whereas the Western ones are landscape. Why? I don't know. Perhaps because of the Japanese writing style, which is right to left and up and down. I don't know. But I kind of like them like this, I have to say. They do have bits on the side that says Star Wars. Uh, and of this all in English. So, yeah. For the inside. Out of interest, this cost me no more than about £7 on Amazon. We have... Nintendo 64 instruction leaflet. Random little Star Wars comic leaflet. A control bit. The manual. How cool is that? And the bit you really want to see. A different looking but very awesome cartridge. That label with Boba Fett is awesome. I think I prefer it to the English one, I have to admit. Out of interest, here's the tray. And I don't think you can see it, but it says Nintendo 64. Again, boxed, really, really good condition, I have to say. Seven quid or so. And I recently got my second boxed Nintendo 64 game. This one was listed as new on Amazon. Is it new? It wasn't sealed. It's in a plastic wrapping, but not sealed. However, it's in very, very, very good condition and was, again, about £7 something. And that is, you may have seen it on Instagram or Twitter, links below, Gambare Nippon Olympic 2000. I hope that really didn't sound racist. I was just trying the Japanese accent. 
you may know this or not, but this is the Japanese equivalent of international track and field for the Nintendo 64. Look at this condition. It is pretty much perfect. So many events. I can't wait to try this one. And inside. We have. Again. Nintendo 64 instruction leaflet. The manual. And. The cartridge. Looks simple, but clean. I like it. I've never played International Track Field. It is a game I've had an interest in. So hopefully this will set me up and build up my expectations more for when I finally get a copy of the game. I can't wait for it, I have to admit. So, as you can see, there are things to take away from this. Japanese games are generally a lot, lot, lot cheaper than the UK equivalents, including the really good ones. Yes, they can be difficult if you don't understand the language. However, I find it helps me to learn the language. So if you do want to learn, this is a fun and interesting way to do it. And there's definitely value in the market there. If there's a game you can't play in, your, in English because it's so much, if you have a Japanese 64, mine was £65. Including a transfer pack and a controller. And five games. Pokemon Stadium 1. Well, the Japanese Pokemon Stadium 2. Pokemon Stadium Gold and Silver. Wave Race, Donkey Kong and Mario Golf. I will show them in another video. It is a fun way to do it. And it does work on UK TV and power leads. So that's the sign else to keep in mind. All in all... I really enjoy my Japanese Nintendo 64 games. But question is, would you want to try games in a different language? Especially one which is as different as Japanese. If you learn the language, you will find that there are actually quite a few English-based words there. But in all with the different symbols and quite a lot of different words and grammar, it is fairly different. Would you want to give it a go? And out of the games I showed you in this video, what would be the one you would want to try, whether it's in English or Japanese? My personal choice that I haven't played? Probably Mario Party 3, because I've played number one on the 64 for so long, and I've played number two a few times, along with the later ones. Okay, I hope you've liked this video. Thank you for sticking around and watching. I will get back to looking at and interacting with your videos soon. I reckon that there's going to be some great stuff. I can't wait to see it. And thank you for understanding with my circumstances at the minute. I hope to get back to regular videos soon. But keep that notification bell clicked and you will get any updates as and when I do load the videos. If you haven't, then please subscribe, like, comment, share the video. It all helps. And I guess, in terms of this video, we are all done. Thank you for watching. Can't wait to see you again.